was, in my mind, just a little uh, street hustler. Right. That uh, was successful in selling his body. But intellectually, nothing. He never went to school. Mm -hmm. and there was no mental discipline. Mm -hmm. He had no background of any kind of it intellectually. Mm -hmm. As far as I, I didn't know him that much. I saw okay. him times. You don't see him. I mean, there's a French author, Celine, for example, who's very sort of gutsy and. Um, you don't seem like a sort of a Celine of that sort of... Yeah, but he didn't have... I don't feel... I mean, I'm not uh, trying to tear him down, but no, no. what I've read about him, he, he's not a good writer in mm. my mind. I mean, he's, he's not a gifted writer. He puts anything mm. together he feels like and, mm. and uh, goes into all these details of his mm. uh, picking up men on uh, mm. 42nd Street and all that. The only thing... The only virtue I see in him, actually... Is that he came out with a, I mean, this, all this should have been, all his uh, writing should have been in some psychiatrist dossier, yeah, his, his, something that he had been telling a psychiatrist. Yeah. And he was the first to publish it, and mm. everybody was mm. aware of this underworld of, uh, of uh, homosexual prostitution, mm. what it was. Mm. And he was one of the kingpins at one mm. time when he was young. And, um, Apparently was very, and it, it shows how short in in sensitivity and instincts he was that he couldn't figure out. My brother didn't want him physically, oh. and he that made him angry yeah. that he was not uh, yeah. turning him on sexually. Yeah. And I know John just, and I had conversations about this man with John, yeah. and I said, "Be careful," because uh, I, I must. I mean, John was always, as we said yesterday, taking the lowest and trying to make them into something yes, else. Yes, no, I and, and to take him to a requiem of, yeah. of Benjamin Britten and to bring him out of the sordid mm. thing of 40. And he didn't, that, that, that to me proves how short he was in sensitivity and, and in uh, mind. John didn't want him physically. He wanted him to get him out of the world he was in. To something higher, better, mm. and at times he sort of glints and he says, "Well, he looked like a saint or something, John." Mm. But uh, he was still very much upset that he wasn't attracting John sexually. Mm. Yes, so he he says that um, your brother had this uh, pick, this Michelangelo. Yeah, the, the creation. The creation. That that's, that, that's true. Is that's it? True. That's not. No, no, yeah. that's true. It had a big, big reproduction, a beautiful one. Yeah. I think he bought in Rome. Uh, the creation of man, you know, the, the, yeah. the ceiling of Michelangelo. Yes. Yeah. It was the chapel. That's true. And he, he obviously gave me, he says he gave me a bedroom mm. and separate of mm. his. Well, I should have, should have told him that John didn't want him in, in bed with mm. him. He was trying to do something with him. Mm to get him out of the sordid world he was in. Perhaps he felt he could be a really, I couldn't say, and if he would write, he could be a, a, a writer, if he would write about other, you know, the, the world, perhaps he could develop them. Exactly, into. but all this is just clinical. Yeah. And in all his books, the ones I've read, mm. the child said you should read them, and I'd read them. Mm. What do you think? I said, well, it's to me they belong in a, in a clinical uh, file somewhere mm. with some psychiatrist where he's ex telling all these mm. things that he does sexually mm. and, and what he feels mm. that he isn't attractive mm. and all that. Mm. And he says, I told you yesterday, he was in love with himself. He had one thing, he kissed the mirror, his own image. Mm. Okay. Mm. I mean, the, the the other thing is, this is not written directly by Retchi. It's written by... by sorry, yes. It's written by, by somebody... By Retchi, else. wrote about so the, um, this unpublished this novel. published? This is a published book, which I saw in the New York Public Library. I just... Oh. Oh, but not the manuscript. No, no, no. But the book is already published. This book is published, yes. I mean, that was just... I just stumbled across it in the New York I Public Library. It in the Grove Press. It's not in books. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to be generally in bookstores. Um, I have the publication details. I think it's called Advocate Books. But you see one thing... Advocate books, yes. life stories. So it's, I think it's a Los Angeles press, and this author is Concilia. Concilia. You see, uh, what she, this character had 
notoriety for a while because I say he was probably the first that told the story of a hustler yeah. with all the lurid details yeah. and all this business. And so he, everybody was talking about him. And it was a shock really to the yeah. average person that yeah. wasn't uh, aware of what goes on in yeah. 42nd Street. Right. And um, everybody was sort of shocked and, and amazed by it. But then when that became common knowledge and spoke old hat, he lost popularity. I don't, I don't know who would buy a book about him now. I mean, who who would be interested in reading about John? I certainly would. Okay. And I think if whatever publishers took a big chance in doing it, because mm. even what I read, what you have here, is, is uninteresting. Again, it tells much about Reggie, but who wants to know that? I mean, maybe he's, I may be prejudiced, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, but, but I certainly wouldn't read it. Because it, it's so obviously misunderstood my brother. Mm. I mean, what he says about him in many things is true, but that, uh, uh, it, what he, what they, the impression I get from this is that he's insisting on the homosexual aspect, which wasn't, I don't say it didn't exist like that, I don't mm. know, but that that was Charles' main interest, it was that I can I can put my hand in fire. I mean, why would you take a, a little uh, street uh, hustler like him to uh, Lennox, Massachusetts, to hear the, the requiem of Benjamin Britten? I mean, he's, he's don't mm. do that. It costs mm. money, effort, mm. and interest in you, trying to help you learn mm. something mm. other than what you were so used to. Mm. 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 Yes, he wanted to. Your 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 brother said years back he wanted to be a teacher. He was like an edu. It's like an education that he was giving. Exactly, and also mm. making him see another another way mm. of life. Because mm. the, the few conversations I had mm. with Reggie, he was very limited in, in mm. knowledge of music, of literature, mm. and he, all he knew was the homosexual world. Mm. And that's all he was interested in, because if you didn't admire his physique, mm. you were blocked out, you would see. Yeah, right, that's very... Okay. And, I mean, you, you certainly couldn't no. admire his... He calls himself... I, I had a dinner with other intellectuals. He was about as far as... I mean, if he doesn't know what the word intellectual means. Mm. It takes a great mm. deal of... of uh, gall to mm. call himself an intellectual. He, I don't think he even went through high school, I don't know, but mm. I mean, no, no, no training in intellectual, you know. Mm. 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 No, he was an autodidact, I mean, He's in a very great. poor background, I mean, yeah. his mother may have been a lovely, good woman, but uh, very, very uh, uneducated, mm. and the father was a violent, I don't know, he's an alcoholic or mm. something, but, but, uh, Bad background, mm. so the wretch didn't have much chance with you. Mm. 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 And as I said about John, he, and I told, I used to say this to John, you're just like Don Quixote, who take a, a foul smelling peasant girl and turn her into a Mocinella and Bob also a lovely, mm. lovely lady with great manners and charm and, and all that. And, and, and that's what, I mean, he thought they would see this little wretch mm. and turn her into what he wanted her to be, mm. a great lady. Mm. Mm. And he had a job of find all these people. And, and some people were successful, with some people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I mean, that would be some my, my No, no, I'm very grateful to you for, as I say, for reading it. And I think it is a very, uh, I can say, it's, 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 it's very uh, strongly, strongly put um, oh, yes. incident, and, um, um, and I don't know. I don't actually. If I ever got to speak to him again, I say, "Why did you use pseudonyms? I mean, why not? Since you're talking about yourself in the book, talk about the other mm. people, the real people. Don't, doesn't have to be Dr. Williams and be Dr. Thompson." Mm. It could.
could have been the name used in this novel, which he never published. That could be. But I have, well, there's another pseudonym there that he, I don't know who he's referring to. Oh, I see. Okay. So I think he, I think he, yeah. for some reason he felt he shouldn't uh, expose my brother to it. Mm. I don't know. It's, I'm re- maybe reading into it my brother shouldn't. I mean, how can I say, John, John Retchie, when he responded to me, he said he didn't want to have any further correspondence with me, but he wished it to be known that he thought your brother was a very noble um, individual who had, um, I can't remember quite how he put it, but he said he there were just three or four very well, very positive sentences about your brother, com- which were completely positive. Yes. And the only thing said, well, is that, and then he mentioned that your brother had known Jean Genet, which is interesting. Yes. Which sort of was an interesting yeah, it is, it's detail. Yeah, detail. But, so that, so, and that's, 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 that's as we left it. Um, so that, yeah, I, don't um, think, I don't think he could offer much more than he mm-hmm. does in this thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, such a complete, in my mind, such a complete misunderstanding. And then the fact that he had an affair with Alfonso, the black man, who was John's uh, manservant, mm. the one John thought had stolen the ice cream. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 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 But I mean, the depiction of Alfonso is otherwise, uh, I can say, accurate. But, uh, not an accurate picture. There, he didn't use a pseudonym. Oh yes, but it, it, again, I say it's such a lack of uh, realizing what John was trying to do with him. Well, he was. Uh, how can I say it was? Uh, uh, these were acts of rejection, defiance. He was being like a, a naughty child, really, wasn't he? Yes, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. And um, I mean, Sebastian had also at times defied. I'm sure John and he'd been and there'd been moments of, of, of enormous tension between them well uh, because it's very hard when you're being trying when somebody's trying to remold you yeah. you know you, you, you're safe in your little mold and you even though you may go to be going into a better one yeah. you don't want to leave the yeah. old one it's always yeah. a fear and then you fight yeah. 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 it's a sort of reversion and he wanted to I mean, I suppose the only other sort of issue which I suppose is interesting is, well, which perhaps I could ask is whether I can say this was, um, this was in a way the years before Stonewall, before there'd been a very, I can say this sort of the, the modern gay activism. Yes. Um, a very, um, and um, whether Retchie represented a, I can say, a new honesty. Yes, um, and the fact that he actually opened that world up to him. I mean, normally they'd be in a dossier in some psychiatrist's mm, files, mm, but he told the world about it mm, openly, mm, and it has some merit. Mm, and that perhaps is a, um, and after all, that relieves a, 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 oh, yes. say, a tension, that repression, which is a repression. It's, it's like, in, almost like a confession, when you go to a confession. Yeah. And, with a priest, I mean, what, yeah. what a good Catholic feels after a confession, they yeah. feel a release, yeah. they spilled all their problems out, yeah. and all they, what, what they consider bad mm. has been spilled out to the priest, you say mm. your Hail Marys, your own fathers, your own right. Mm. 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 Your brother had been, there's, <laughs> um, there's a, uh, someone in Britain, Lord Longford, Frank Pagan and Lord Longford, yeah. and um, in his autobiography is a paragraph about your brother. Oh, really? Yeah, saying that there was the remarkable Dr. Thompson, whom he had worked with, uh, uh, spent a lot of time with released prisoners in this society, this group for the yes. rehabilitation yes, of yes. For released prisoners. It writes very warmly about it. Well, and that's, that was what he did with prisoners, with people mm. that had been uh, uh, wrongly accused or something. He was going mm. to defend them. Mm. That's and, right. People that took the wrong track mm. in life, he felt that, and he, I mean, as a psychiatrist and a doctor and man of the world, he wasn't fighting homosexuality, but he was, he was trying to get them out of that sordid mm. world of homosexuality. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, obviously, this is, I mean, it was, I mean, it's, 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 it
I mean, I'm saying, the, the, I mean, the criminalization was such an injustice. Yes. And I think my interpretation of your brother is that, where, that wherever he felt there was injustice, that's right. He, right felt, there. he was. He yeah. felt that one needed to to to, to, fight, to fight and to and also, but also at a personal level to to offer oh, yes. help and whatever. So that proof it is that mm. I told you he left mm. nothing in his mm. estate. Everything he mm. made, he gave to people that needed more, mm. or whatever. And he took patients. I, I, some patients couldn't pay very much, and he said, "I only charge him fifty cents or a dollar mm. for a consultation." Yeah. And I said, "Well, why, why not give it to them free?" He said, "No, they have to feel they're contributing to their health." Mm. And it's an effort, mm. an effort they're making to help themselves. He said, if I took that away, they'd just ride on my coattails like I'm taking care of the expenses. Yeah. They have to contribute to their well-being. Okay. Even if it's 50 cents, that's all they can mm. afford. Mm. I mean, maybe even that is, is a drain on their, mm. on their uh, money situation. Mm. But they have to feel that uh, real desire to it. I'll give my last order mm. to you. Help me out of this. Okay. Okay. And there's um, one thing that he says that Marilyn Monroe was a patient, briefly. That I didn't know. But it was his. Well, he obviously read she was oh. admired Marilyn Monroe. Yes, I read the part there. Yeah, that. Was he Strasbourg? Briefly, briefly treated Marilyn Monroe. Yes, Lee Strasberg. I think he was using, he, Reggie Perry, thought she was the greatest. She was I see, but this issue with the acting teacher is like this method acting, isn't it? That's right, the method they call it. And Lee Strasberg, I mentioned that, I yes. didn't think of the name last time it came to me. So that confirms, yeah. that confirms that. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, it's confirmed. And he had, I told you he had a big knockdown, mm. drag out fight with Lee Strasberg because he was using the told him recall, and, and John told Strasberg that it was a very dangerous thing to do, to have people go and almost back to their womb. Some of them would cry and, and almost get hysterical. And, uh, and John told Strasberg, according to what John told me, that only a very, very gifted and trained psychiatrist could attempt putting them in that state, just to bring them out and not have uh, damage. It was. Uh, in the, in, the, in the works there, right. and Lee Strasberg, and like, of course, he, that was, he used that, that was the method. Right. And Marlon Brando and all of them went through that. Yeah. And uh, but John thought that he was doing it. Strasberg was mm. doing something that was very dangerous psychologically. Interesting. Very interesting. But on the one hand, he felt that... And maybe that's what he, maybe he did yeah. some work for Mary. Because Mary Monroe was one of Strasbourg's uh, students. I mean, she did take courses at the university. What was it called? The Method School, where, where she had this group. Interesting. So, I mean, it's just a, it's just an incidental detail, isn't it? But interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. no great importance. No, no, no. I mean, here, Reggie Bernie thought Marilyn Monroe was the greatest. Mm. And, uh, and uh, again, she was a, a poor little ignorant girl that mm. they, they made it to something that she couldn't, yeah. uh, couldn't mm. maintain. Mm. It drove her out of her mind because okay. she wasn't prepared to. In one movie, she worked with Olivier. And I mean, she, poor girl, she couldn't know how to keep up on the same acting mm. levels. I mean, you could feel that she was uncomfortable, yeah. that she wasn't, mm. uh, she wasn't really enjoying it mm. or feeling secure in what she was doing. Mm. Or, or even uh, faintly projecting a capacity to do mm. it. Mm. She just looked ignorant and, and struggling to keep up with her. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's something like different. Um, or your brother is in the poem Age of Anxiety, which Auden's poem Age of Anxiety. Yes. 
And then that she is... Was a, she was a bartender or something. Orden's the bartender. Well, Orden's the bartender. And your brother is Malin, who's one of the four figures in this oh, New York bar, a major voice in the poem. And I sent, I sent you uh, orders. You sent the copy, photocopy of the dedication. And he mentions that, you, that John was also in the book, right? To mail in from yes, the bartender, right. which is brilliant. Yes. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. Um, and there was a mail in at Swarthmore, Patrick mail in, but he was never there. He was an absentee figure. So that the name, Auden took the name, but the character yeah, but is your brother. Yeah. So that's, that's absolutely. Because Auden says that it's a Canadian Air Force medical investigation yes. officer, well. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. So that says, uh, and the Jungian, the poem is, uh, yeah, is, yeah, is a Jungian analysis of, right. But um, what I wanted to ask was, was that it was set by Leonard Bernstein. It became, I think, Bernstein's, one of Bernstein's symphonies, The Age of Anxiety. I think so, yes. Your brother never mentioned that no. Bernstein had, no. had set him to music. No. <laughs> that he um, was in the music of the... I don't think what the, the connection with Bernstein was. Oh, yeah, there was uh, his wife, his, I don't know, he divorced her probably. He was married to a Chilean girl, you know, a girl from Chile, Felicia Montella, it was her name. Uh, but Jewish parents were born in, and raised in Chile. And um, a very charming person. And I don't know whether John knew. You heard a met Bernstein through Felicia or what was it? He didn't know him. He did know Bernstein. So. And he liked West Side Story. Oh, yes. Yes, it was the Romeo and Juliet of the yeah. Puerto Rican section yeah. in New York. Yeah. And Jerem Robbins, the choreographer for that, was, I knew him. He, he was brilliant. He could do classical and sort of and modern, mm. uh, almost like musical comedy dancing. All those people, though, you, you, most of them are dead now. That mm. gives you a strange feeling that all that world, I mean, I've, I've mentioned famous mm. people I knew, you know, of others, my friends of mine have died too, mm. how they internationally known figures. Mm. Salvador Dali died. Leonid Miasim, the director of the, the Ballet Ruiz. Well, most everybody that, that I was related to that work. Little by little, they fade away. It was culturally very exciting, very well, creative, was, absolutely. Was I mean, you were, when um, I look back and I think I'm, how lucky I was to have experienced all that. Mm. And go to rehearsal for ballet, because you, when you see a ballet already mm. done, it's beautiful. It's a lot of fun to see them. Nice. Yeah. Getting it together, creating it. Right. I see. Okay. And then I went to a, never forget a rehearsal of um, the Nutcracker and Nijinsky's sister, mm. uh, Ronya Nijinska, was, was re restaging it. Mm. And when they do the, the snowflakes, they were uh, one of the numbers of the snowflake walls that's mm. famous in the Nutcracker. And she was very, had a big Russian voice. They were rehearsing and she said, no, 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 stop. You're not supposed to be cornflakes. You're not cornflakes, you're snowflakes. <laughs> okay. Very <laughs> <Hey>, good. <laughs> Those things say in my mind, mm. you're not supposed to be cornflakes, you're snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> your, um, your brother was fascinated by Nijinsky. Oh, yes. Um, it was yeah. because of his mental... Nijinsky well, that mental and health. also that he's still considered the greatest male dancer ever. I mean, of all time. Mm -hmm. And then his, his uh, tempestuous relationship with Yagilev. Uh, how he... Actually, he lost his mind when he married Romola, and Nijinsky finally married uh, one of the record the ballet dancers. Mm. And uh, Yagili fired him, mm. and he, he collapsed. Uh, he had a nervous breakdown. Actually, I never came out of it. Because 
because he was devoted to the idea that Trupati will be married to Ramana. Mm-hmm. She thought, I don't know what to just give up, but I imagine he thought it would work out that they could be like a menage a trois. Oh, I see, there was a relationship with the Agala. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it was one of the Agala's big loves, was delicious. And, well, the, I read so much of it, not only about ballet, but ballet work. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nijinska, the sister of Nijinsky, mm-hmm. wrote a beautiful book about their childhood in St. Petersburg. And she mentions uh, all the problems with the Agala. How much Nijinsky uh, suffered. I mean, because Yagadev was a very imposing character, and of course he held the reins of the, of the company, and the, he got hired and fired at his mm-hmm. pleasure. Mm-hmm. And when I was in uh, Venice, I went to see Yagadev. He's buried in Venice. And I thought it would be much, since he was such a big figure in the world, actually the biggest figure of the last century in producing ballet. And, making it known to the Western world. Mm. I thought he'd have a, uh, an imposing grave, just a tiny little marker, mm. okay. and overgrown with weeds. I mean, mm. Is that on one of the islands? Or? Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, okay, very nice. So. I think it's San Michele. Okay, but it's such a nothing to mm. the mm. grave cover, okay. overgrown with weeds. Mm. I suppose John would have un- understood a great deal because, as a physiologist, he had he knew a great deal about human movement oh, and yes. resp- and how you breathe, breathe exactly. and mm-hmm. muscular control as well. But I, now that we're talking about that, did you come across um, in any of all this uh, John's friendship with uh, Donald McLeary? Mm, no, no. He was a, he was one of the male important pieces right. of the. London, or whatever it's called, the Royal, Royal Ballet. Ballet. Yeah. And when he was in, when they were performing in New York, Donald hurt his knee, or his ankle, I've forgotten what it was. And John took him to, him, to a good doctor and, and um, helped him through the bed because he he couldn't dance for quite a while because he injured his foot or his knee. Mm-hmm. And, um, as a matter of fact, I remember John said he was going to have a ballet bar put in his apartment. One of the rooms was quite large. Mm. He said, I'm going to have a bar installed there so that Donald can practice here. I, yeah. I said, don't do that. There's so many studios in New York uh, that he can rent for an hour or so to do his practice. Mm. He said, no, I'd, I'd like to see if he feels comfortable yet away from all the things in the city. I'll have a bar installed and he can do his exercises here. Did he do that? No, I think I talked about it. And partly a self protection because I know John couldn't I told him, you know what it's gonna cost you to have a bar installed and, and mirrors in that room. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a nice a nice hunk of cash. Mm-hmm. And I knew that he would be asking me to loan him some money for the bar. Oh, I see. So in self protection I said, No, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't stop to think this is going to involve so much money. Mm-hmm. He just ought to think the man needs a um, place to rehearse or to get over his injury. Mm-hmm. I'll, pro- I'll provide it. I'll think of what it's going to entail mm-hmm. financially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would have been when? In, in the uh, in late if, 40s. In in the in the no, late no wait, no wait a minute the fifties in the fifties yes when when the when the ballet was in, on tour a yeah royal ballet with Marco Fontaine yeah. and all that and um, as a matter of fact a Russian friend and girlfriend of mine was working with the mm. royal ballet and when they were in New York they mm. took John backstage to meet her. She was married at the time to an Indian from India, mm-hmm. a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. And um, he drove her crazy. She committed suicide. Oh. Uh, did you ever see, did you ever go much of the ballet, the, the, the English, the Royal? The Royal Ballet. 
I suppose occasionally I saw uh, Margaret Fontaine dance. Yeah. That was nice. When she was younger, yeah. No, I don't think I ever saw Maria. Michael Solms yeah. probably was her partner. Yeah. But uh, this girl that committed suicide was, uh, she was Russian and trained in New York with Russian teachers. Yeah. But she was taken by the yeah. Royal Ballet yeah. in major roles. I mean, she yeah. was a principal dancer. Yeah. And she was Donald McLeary's partner. Yeah. Yeah. He always partnered her. But the, um, there's a ballerina, Lydia Lopakova. Yes. But she was, she was with, uh, wasn't she with Picasso? She married Maynard Keynes. Yeah. And that's right, that's right, that's right, yeah. Um, uh, Picasso married, but I, forgot who, I didn't know her. But uh, I know that Lopakova married Keynes. Do you think, could John ever went to Russia? I no. So. No. Okay. Oh, he was fascinated by by the Russian Russian literature. Uh, he loved Pushkin. I know that and he also liked uh, Dostoevsky. Gogol. I mean, he he read quite a bit of Russian literature. Could he read Russian? No. Translation. I always wondered, because the Russians were very active in physiology, there was Pavlov and big conferences in the 1930s. And, um. I wonder if he had any contact with the great Russian scientists. I never heard him mention Pavlov, of course, would be the salivating dog or whatever mm. it was. I can't imagine your, your brother would have liked that. Hmm? I can't imagine that your brother, that John, would have liked that at all. No, no. Um, but uh, I can say, you're, you're, uh, he, you're clearly the, the these great figures. Can I get a cup of coffee? Um, yes, we could. You drink yeah. coffee? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty join sure you drink tea mostly. I don't. Uh, no. what, I, I'll join you in whatever you would. Um, no, I just I had a feeling when John would have wanted mm. something done that, that uh, Schwartz could do. He said, he's, he used to say to me, he's an excellent worker and very reliable and does mm. his best to please me. So, I mean, he, I felt that he really likes him as a person that he was very willing to do everything he could to help John okay. get the, whatever he wanted in tapes mm. or recordings or... Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, interesting person because he does these sound recordings of City Sounds. Yes. Um, but um, he's agoraphobic, so he doesn't, he only will just go in the s streets around. Yes. And can't he work can't go further. further. Um, I wondered whether you're... you're, you're no, you're John used to go down to see him. And, uh, and I know that because yeah. he's way over the west side. Mm. Do, you rem do you remember by any chance how... how was it just in this 1960s, in the sort of in the in, in the later years, in the yes. 60s, or did, was it earlier on? No, I think it did maybe uh, late 50s and 60s. Okay. That's my memory. Right. Yeah. Because I think he wanted John was uh, doing a thing. I don't know just what he wanted to do with it, but he called his brother, and John was reading and sort of putting different letters together to make sort of a, uh, whatever study he wanted to do of, of uh, Van Gogh's brother, Theo. And he spent a lot of time editing and looking for the passages he wanted to, to change what he, the book he had on all the letters. He wanted to, to change the order to, or to meld some with others. Do you think he was using it for teaching or for, no, for, himself. Uh, for a radio program or for himself? For himself, I think mostly. He had great, great admiration for Van Gogh. Okay. And as a matter of fact, when I told him I'd been to where Van Gogh died and in Auvers uh, was a little bit away from Paris, he said, I wish I'd gone with you. He was, he was, I told him, I said, you were in Paris at the time. I'm sorry I didn't tell you I was going to 
to Van Gogh's house because he was as when John was at UNESCO. Actually, I was staying with John at Tel Aviv. He used to travel in to Paris. Yeah, yeah, we both take it. It was a train that I think it was. They stopped at Auvergne Sud. What? Not the what was it called? Soissy sur Seine. Soissy sur Seine. And um, I remember Sebastian would walk with us to the station. He was within walking distance of where John was. And we take the commuter train into Paris, about half an hour or so. So Sebastian was there. Mm-hmm. It would have been then in the summer, or in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, because that's when I was off from. I was at that time teaching at New York University, mm-hmm. and um, we had the summer off. And it was lovely. I mean, all the, the greenery and Lodi, even the big trees. Beautiful place. Must have been very tranquil. And very, and very, very, tra- and also the people that were very tranquil. I mean, they made you, mm-hmm. whatever uh, uh, nervousness or tension you had, mm-hmm. they sort of dispel it for you because they were so peaceful, so so kind and nice mm-hmm. that you felt well, no problems. And, this is the way the words should be. Okay. <clears throat> Sebastian was very, very kind to me, very uh, genuinely said, if I can do anything to help you while you're here. And, I mean, willing to put himself out. Yeah. And Matthias was there as well? Oh. I didn't meet him. No. He probably was there, but I never saw him. And John had a strange a deranged woman who was, um, I don't know whether she was Dutch or German, I think maybe Dutch. Her name was Elizabeth. Mm. And uh, she did the cooking at, uh, oh, in the turret there, that little turret that where they lived. Oh, right. And the strange, this is the amazing thing, when I was in, I bought a place in uh, County Kerry in Ireland after I'd been living in but when I wanted to get away from New York, I'd been there 33 years. And I said, I want to go where it's peaceful and quiet. And I bought this place in, in County Kerry. And one day I saw a person with a helmet flying up on a, on a motorcycle. And my house was quite up the hill right on it. And um, she knocked on the door, I opened. She really says, you're not Dr. Thompson. I mean, everybody in the village called me Dr. Thompson. And I said, well, I'm really not a doctor. I have a PhD, but I don't know what your problem is. She said, no, I, they, they told me you were John Thompson, the man I worked for in, in, in Paris. And she was very nasty, like I, like I, I had fooled her, oh. that I was trying to be who I was. And her, I don't know what she thought. She was deranged. She used to write me long, long letters uh, explaining her devotion to John and how she had been fooled that I wasn't John. And uh, I was actually a little bit afraid of her. She really was off her rocker. This was after John's death? Oh, yes. She wouldn't believe that he died. Huh. And when the village she heard, because she had a little cottage somewhere outside the village, when she went down, they say, talk about me, Dr. Thompson. She thought it was, immediately she thought it was John. And she asked where I live, and she mm-hmm. came up on her motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Was some of the, did you ever come across uh, Ursula? No. He calls the Saint Ursula, um, no. Ursula Smith. No, I'm just, I've heard of her. Yeah. But uh, I never. <coughs> and actually, Elizabeth, after I started thinking of it, that I had seen her to be, she'd aged a good deal, and, and she was in such a deranged mind that her, attitude, her expression was, you're not Dr. Thompson. Do you remember these people, I mean, people still wanted your brother to be living. They, yes. needed, they needed him. And apparently he, I mean, probably up to his death, had some correspondence with her, or in some way, or 
maybe even just Christmas cards, I don't know, but they hadn't lost contact. <clears throat> Do you know anything about the, your brother when he was um, had tuberculosis? Well, that was also a mystery because um, the first time I heard about it was in the, I think the introduction to his poem is that somebody wrote that he was recovered from tuberculosis. And I never heard and never, I don't know whether it is John's imagination. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the medical record. It is? Oh, yeah. Oh. He was in Rutland Sanatorium in Massachusetts. Yeah, but he was in um, Worcester, right? Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes. Um, that could be where it is. Um, no, no. Um, yes, it was in Worcester, I think. He had a, yeah. I mean, there was x-rays of his lung. There were. And um, there was a tuberculosis, sort of tuberculosis. Well, he had volunteered to join the Royal Canadian Air Force. Yes. And um, the first time round, it was at the medical, they mm, seen the tuberculosis yeah. on his lung. And I wondered whether the pressure chamber experiments, because he also went into cold chambers and so on, whether that hasn't... Um, no, you know what, I, I may be wrong, but um, I had the same problem I when I joined the U.S. Navy during yeah. the war. But they, after many tests and this and that, they said there were calcifications on the lungs from a earlier tubercular lesion. I, I mean, I didn't have it active anymore. Mm -hmm. But it was, they called them, uh, what did I tell you they called them? Um, calcifications. I see. So they... So maybe that's what John had too. Yeah. And maybe we all had it in Mexico for all I know. I see. You didn't sense that there was some pulmonary, some sort of lung problem with the... No, not... not uh, just sort of physically, it was sort of you, we, just we, as latent. We, yeah, I mean, this, you can have a latent tuberculosis. Yeah, but, yes. No, this was even, not even latent because yeah. um, when I was about 10, I contracted typhoid fever in Mexico. And I was in bed, lying on my back for yeah. I think it was 90 some days. And I think they said that probably was the beginning of it. Yeah. But when I joined, when I went for all the physical, they put me through all kinds of yeah. things. They said it was calcification, so they took me. See. Okay. Okay. The because for your brother had volunteered, and then for <coughs> then they he had to go to the sanatorium, and um, and then a year later, they was forty one because he was already in Toronto in forty. Mm. And, uh, then he was um, taken on as an RCA, Royal Canadian Air Force officer. 